the book of 1 John is in the New Testament because it's written in red. All right? It's in the New Testament. Okay? And let's read that again. The book of 1 John. Okay, the book of 1 John, chapter 3, starting at verse, what was that? Chapter 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses, uh, transgresses also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Now, it didn't say transgression of the law. Uh, sin is transgression of the Ten Commandments. No. The law. The law. Not eating pork. Not committing adultery. Okay? Committing adultery is, is in the Ten Commandments, okay? That's part of the law. The Ten Commandments are a part of the law, all right? Remember what Yahweh Shah said. I come not to destroy the, what's the paraphrasing? I come not to destroy the law or the prophets, okay? I come not to fulfill, but to destroy it. Yahweh Shah did not come to destroy the law of Moses, okay? He did not come to do that, all right? All right, now let's look up that word transgression. What does the word transgression mean? It is an act that goes against a law, rule, rule, con, a rule code of conduct, or offense. Okay? So when you uh, uh, break one of these laws, it's, in a, it's, it's offensive to the Most High. And He does not like that. All right? That's why it's very important to be swaddled in righteousness, swaddled with the fear of the Lord, swaddled in faith, swaddled in the scriptures. Because when you're swaddled, you're restricted of, of, move, of movement. Okay? We cannot be of this world, man. There are some things, when you get into this truth, there are things you can do and things you cannot do. Now, when you come into this truth, can you not have a good time? Of course you can still have a good time. You know, you can still drink. But remember, what scripture say, a false balance is an abomination. It's okay to drink strong drink. All right, you have a child drunk wine. You can drink wine, you know, but know your balance. Don't drink so much to the point where you get so pissy drunk, man. That's an abomination. All right? That's an abomination. Okay? Um, being swaddled is, is like a cocoon. All right, I was looking at some pictures on uh, on this on uh, what was it on Google, and it's amazing how a caterpillar, or you have certain insects or certain worms that um, they make a cocoon, and they they're swaddled in that cocoon. Okay, and within that cocoon, they come out emerging like a moth or like a butterfly, or whatever flying insect they are, all right? When you're in this truth, when you're swaddled, you know, but, but if you're swaddled in this truth, man, that's what you need to su survive in the growth. And when you're in, when that insect is in that cocoon, it does not eat, it does not drink. It gets all its nutrients from that uh, uh, cocoon, man, okay? When we're swaddled, in righteousness, when we're swaddled, when we come into the shoot like a babe, you know, we have to be swaddled with righteousness. All right? Everything that we need to survive on this planet is in the scriptures. Okay? Well, what we need to do. All right? And then when you, when, 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 when that cocoon is, uh, when a butterfly comes out, out of that cocoon or that moth comes out of that cocoon, it's a beautiful insect, man. Nice wings. It can fly. You know? It knows where to go instinctively. You know? Look at monarch butterflies, man. Those are some beautiful uh, uh, insects. Okay? All right? But to come out like that, if you if you want to come out like a butterfly, man, hey, man, you got to make that, you got to allow the most high to swatter you. So be a cocoon, all right? Go in that cocoon, man. Stay there. Be steadfast in it, okay? Live, breathe the scriptures. 
all right, so that you may come out a butterfly, man, because that's what we want. In the end, we want to come out as a butterfly, man. We want to fly, and the troops will you, uh, set you free, okay? But you got to be steadfast, man. You got to have faith, okay? Obey the word, man. O obey what uh, the prophets, I mean, believe what the prophets are saying right now. Now, like I said a few weeks ago, a few other times, you have some Israelite groups out there who do not preach the correct doctrine. That's why it's important for you to have faith, do your research, and ask the Most High to put the Spirit in you and the, and the Spirit of discernment on who is uh, speaking truth. You don't, you don't want to be led straight to the slaughter. All right? Now, what is a cocoon? It is a silky case spun by the larvae of many insects for protection in the pupil stage. All right? Now, when you go into that word, what is that? Envelop, it means surrounded in a protective, comforting way. Does it not say uh, in scriptures, the fear of the Lord is our treasure? You know, the fear of the Lord protects you, man. When you swaddle like this, you're protected because you're restricted. All right? You can't you, you can't move. I mean, you can move, but your, your movement is restricted. All right? And when your movement is restricted, when you come into the shoe, when your move, movement is restricted, okay, it causes you not to sin. It prevents sin from happening. Now, you know, are you not going to sin? Are you going to sin when you come into this truth? Of course. A righteous man falls seven times, but you learn from that mistake. And you pick yourself back up. Dust yourself off. Get in scriptures. Repent. All right? Repent. Get back up again. Put that swaddling cross on you again, which, which is the scriptures. Faith. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is your treasure. And also, it's your protection. All right? So, honoring the law, statutes, and commandments is protection. All right? Think about it. Um, you have... Let me see if I can think of a situation. Okay? Um, say, for example, um, you and another a guy grew up. All right? You and another guy grew up together. Oh, perfect example. Perfect example. I just thought about this. Uh, there was a uh, story on the news um, about this Cuban woman, and uh, was well, so-called Cuban, which is from the tribe of Manessa, and also this Levite. Okay, he was Haitian. All right, Le Levites, the so-called Haitians, uh, are the tri from the tribe of Levites. Levites. Okay, uh, they grew up together playing football, sports, or whatever, and you know. Of course, when you grow up, when you grow up, you go your separate ways. So, uh, the Cuban lady, she started studying law, and you know, I don't know her fully background or whatever, but she became a judge. Okay, and uh, one day, she saw her childhood friend, whom she used to play with, in the courtroom. All right, he got into an accident and just ran. He ran off. Hit and run, okay? She saw the name, looked at the face, and when the uh, the Levite was going into trial, man, he just had his head down like this. But uh, let me go back a minute. When they were young, um, he said encouraging words to her about playing football or something like that. You can do it. Uh, some some kind of encouraging word, words. I don't know what type of situation it, it was, but... When they would play, they would play together. She would play with him, you know, and playing sports and stuff like that, you know. They just grew up together, all right? And I guess she remembered those words that he said for the rest of her life, man. I'm assuming that that got her through law school, man, okay? And, and to the point where she's a judge now, all right? And um, fast forward, uh, she was doing court or something like that, and... The guy that she used to play football with and sports with when she was little came to her courtroom and you can see that Levi, he had his head down. He knew, he knew that he was in some deep shit because he was, you know, was a hit and run. 
you know, he, he was down in down in spirit and everything. But um, but um, since she was in a high place, she read the name, recognized the name, looked at him, and said she called his name out. I think she said, "You remember me? We used to play together in the street." And then he would just, he just started busting out crying, man. Started busting out crying. He said, and then she said something. Uh, are you okay? You know, I remember you and, and something like that. And your case is dismissed. Boom. You know? Boom. You know? So that's why it's important to be swaddled in the spirit. Be swaddled in in uh in the scriptures. Okay? Because if we are, the most high can bring us out of sit certain situations, man. You know? That's why it's important to be swaddled in the spirit. That's why it's important. Important to be swaddled in the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. All right, and that was just one example, man. You know. Now, let's go to the book of uh, how much time I got here? Okay, I got like 15 more minutes. Let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter uh, 14, verse 26. And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Okay? Now let's go into that word uh, refuge. What does it mean? R-E-F-U-G-E. A condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. Okay? Now let's go back to the definition of what a cocoon is. It is a silky case spun by the larvae of many insects for protection in the pupal stage. So you're in that cocoon, you in that, when you get, uh, uh, when you establish a fear for the Lord, you're like a cocoon, man, you, you, you're, you're protected. All right, you're protected. All right, and that's what the fear of the Lord uh, does to you. It protects you, okay? But you have to establish that. You have to be circumcised in your mind, man, okay? You have to be circumcised in your mind and convinced in your own mind that you have to establish a fear for the Lord, that you have to know that He is the Father of Spirits. He controls everything, okay? He controls Satan. He controls these wicked-ass people, man. He controls these wicked-ass uh, Edomites in, 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 in the government today, okay? The most high controls these plagues and diseases. All right? Where was I at? Okay. Yeah, I was at uh, Proverbs chapter 14 and 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. So if you have a fear for the Lord, you're faithful. All right, you have a strong confidence in him. Why? Because we know he controls all things, no matter what situation you're in. Okay? Yeah, some of y'all right now may be going through a job crisis. You might not be able to find a job. You lost your job. Uh, you're struggling to feed your family. Okay? But in the end, hey, stay in that cocoon. Stay in righteousness, man. Okay? Stay in righteousness. Okay? Uh, in scriptures, Sirach 2 and 1, it says, well, if you're paraphrasing, when thou come serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You know, you might want to just bust out that cocoon, man. Take a nice shred it and say, oh, I got to do this. I got to go. You know, no, don't do that. And I'm speaking to myself first and foremost because I've done it. I've made some swifty uh, decisions that caused me to in a, in a, be in a worse situation but I was what I was already in. You know, you got to be steadfast when it comes to the truth. You got to be steadfast at faith. All right? Your faith is, might be tested. Hey, Jacob's trouble is starting to happen right now. And things are getting ready to uh, pop off, man, like popcorn. So gird yourselves, man. Get swaddled. Get immersed. Get swaddled with faith. Get swaddled with fear. 
gets water with uh, the scriptures, gets water with the law, because that is going to lead to your salvation. All right, it's not going to lead to your destruction. All right, now if you swallow it in wickedness, that's going to lead to your destruction. Okay, the Most High does not like a wicked heart, a proud heart. Let me see. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, worth your paraphrasing. Um, Okay, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay. As a matter of fact. Let's whip it out. Ecclesiasticus is found in the uh, Apocrypha. Okay, if you don't have an Apocrypha, try to get one online. It's like 10 bucks. You know. Um, 12... This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, um, 12 and 26. Oh, 12 and 6, so like it. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, here it is, okay. For the Most High hateth sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keepeth them against the mighty day of, of their, of their uh, punishment. So for you to say that um, Yahweh Shai, whom the world, I mean, Yahweh, whom the world enemy calls God, uh, does not hate the sinner, but hates the sin, he hates the sin, and he hates the sinner. It's right here in Ecclesiasticus. Right here in Scriptures. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, verse 6. For the Most High hateth sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. Okay, so all you sinners out there who don't hearken to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, including, including Muslims, including uh, uh, including Muslims, um, the so-called Jews in Israel, including including Christians, okay? If you don't upkeep the law to the best of your ability, the Most High is going to allow you to be destroyed. I mean, it's right. Well, bringing out the point that he does not, that he does not, it says he hateth sinners. He hateth sinners, all right? And will repay with vengeance unto the ungodly. All right? I mean, I don't got to break that down. Y'all should know what that is. All right? But anyway, let me get into, uh, um, and that breaks that, that saying that God hates the sin and not the sinner. The Most High does not like sin or the sinner. If you're a sinner, the Most High does not like you. So in order for the Most High to like you, you must be swaddled in what? Fear. Faith. Swaddled in the Word. Swaddled in the Scriptures. All right. Um, I brought out that example. The perfect example was Noah. You know, uh, it says by faith being warned of the Most High of things that not yet that not. Well, hold on. Let me let me get it. I don't want to butcher it. Let me go back to the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter. Let me see here. The book of Hebrews. All right. Let me pull it back up. book of Hebrews Hebrews okay let me see what chapter that was in the book of he Hebrews chapter 11 starting at verse 7 
By faith, no one being warned of Yahweh of things not seen, and that is the faith. I mean, that's what faith is. What we paraphrasing, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Let me see. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Um, okay, yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay, and it says, by faith, Noah being warned of things not seen as yet, move with fear. Okay, and that's how we have to move. We got to move with fear. Okay, when we're swaddled, you're restricted. Okay, when, when you have fear in your heart, when you fear something, you watch what you do. You don't do no crazy shit, you know? And that's what these two-thirds out here doing today. A lot of our people are, 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 are not swaddled in the scriptures. They're doing stupid things, all right? Going out there protesting for Black Lives Matter is not going to do anything for you. It didn't do anything in the 50s and 60s, you know? Yeah, you may be free. You think you're free, okay? But who's getting paid more on your job, okay? You're a woman. You're working. A man is, could be getting paid more than you, okay? You may be a so-called black person who has a, a government position, a position in government. Are you getting paid what you're supposed to get paid? Are you getting paid more than that uh, Edomite, that so-called white man? Huh? All right, you're still slaves, all right, in sports. If they don't want you no more, what they do? They trade you, just like in with slavery. You get traded, all right? Okay, so... um. I think I wanted to bring that up. But Noah moved with fear, man. He moved with fear. He was swaddled in fear. Swaddled in faith. You know, when, when that, and that's what we have to be swaddled in, man. All right? But uh, what time is it? I think I'm going to end it there. Um, let's go to the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 7. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 7. Okay, the book of Genesis, chapter 7, starting at verse 7. And Noah went in. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, let's start at verse 5. Genesis chapter 7, verse 5. And Noah did according unto all the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives, with him, into the ark, because of the waters of the flood. Okay? Um, yeah, so, so basically, Noah was protected from the flood. Alright? Now, in scriptures it says Esau is getting ready to come in like a flood, man. When you when you swaddled in righteousness, you know that's your cocoon, you know. Just like Noah went went inside uh, before the flood started. Okay, if you swaddled in righteousness, if you swaddled in the word, you've been pushing this truth to the best of your ability. That cocoon is gonna uh, be like a, 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 a that that righteous barrier. That cocoon being swaddled in righteousness is gonna be like your ark for protection. Okay, then they say in scriptures, the fear of the Lord is your it says in scriptures, the fear of the Lord is your treasure. And also what I just read, what if you're paraphrasing, the fear of the Lord is your refuge. So you being swaddled is going to act like an ark. It's going to be a cocoon. Okay, that is going to be your protection, man. All right? So if you want to live through this, if you want some answers to what's going on right now, why are things happening like this, get into the scriptures. Go on YouTube. Look up who the real Israelites are, man. First, establish a fear. Establish a, 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 a fear for the Lord. Go on Google. Uh, look up fear of the Lord. Look up scriptures like that. Write it down. Create like a, a, a record. Okay? All right? That's what I do sometimes. I have to write stuff down, man. You know, you got scriptures right here. I got to write them down because sometimes I can't remember them all. All right? Do what you got to do, man. You know? Some brothers in the truth, man, they don't got to uh, uh, write down scriptures. They can remember it in their mind. All right? But remember, establishing a fear for the Lord is one of the first things you got to do, man, to be protected. All right? 
Because Esau's not playing, man. The RFID microchip is coming. All right? The hour of temptation is coming. You know? So you might as well gird yourselves right now with the fear of the Lord. If not, hey, you're going to be destroyed. All right? But I'm going to end it there. I want to send all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Makar Kadash, and uh, the water for listening. And our uh, Lord willingness was edifying. Till next time, Shalom. Remember, stay gird up, man. Be swaddled in righteousness. Be swaddled in fear. Be swaddled in faith. Be swaddled in the, in the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. And remember, the fear of the Lord is your refuge. All right? It's your protection. Till next time, Shalom.